A graph is a nonlinear data structure that contains nodes and edges. A node, or vertex, is just a single unique value, while an edge represents a connection or relationship between two of these nodes. Think of something like Instagram. Every user is a node. Every time you follow a user, you create a new edge connecting two nodes together. This is known as a directed graph because the relationship flows one way. The follower follows the followee and not vice versa. Now consider Facebook. Your edges in the graph are friendships. This relationship goes both ways, which is known as an under directed graph. Graphs can also be weighted, which means the node has some additional data about the relationship, like the distance between two airports. A node might also point to itself, like an airplane that takes off and comes back to land at the same airport. This is known as a cycle. Graphs are used in many real-life software products, and you'll often be asked to represent a graph in code in a technical interview. One way to represent a graph is with a 2D array or adjacency matrix. Create one row and one column for every node. When two nodes have an edge or connection, add a 1 at the point they intersect. This makes it fast and easy to look up a specific edge or to add a new edge. But as a 2D array, it takes quadratic space complexity and quadratic time to insert a new node into the graph. An alternative approach is an adjacency list. In this representation, we start with a collection of nodes. Then each item has its own array of its neighbors. This makes it faster to iterate over a node's edges and is more efficient with memory, especially when you have many nodes and few edges. In your interview, you'll likely need to traverse your graph. One option is a depth-first search. Start with any random node, go to its first child, then its first child, and do that for as long as you can. When there are no more children, backtrack to the last node and continue the process. This algorithm is usually implemented with a recursive function. Another option is a breadth-first search. From your starting node, add all of the direct children to a queue. Once they've been visited, move on to the grandchildren and continue following this pattern in layers. This has been graphs in 100 seconds, but hang out for a few minutes because now we're going to implement these algorithms in JavaScript. If you're new here, like and subscribe, hit the like button, open your IDE, and get ready to go beyond 100 seconds. As a developer, you'll come across all kinds of different real-life implementations of graphs. I mentioned Facebook's social graph at the beginning of the video, and they're commonly used for recommendation engines, like Yelp, for example, to connect businesses to users to reviews, or Netflix to connect the movies that you watch to movies that you might want to watch in the future. They're also used to represent geographic data. For example, on Google Maps, you can think of every intersection as a node, and then every road and its distance as the edge connecting these two nodes. Over the next few minutes, we'll implement a basic graph in JavaScript based on the flight connections between airports. In this case, every airport is a node, and the edge represents whether or not you can fly from one airport to another. This edge could contain additional information, like the kilometers between the two airports, in which case that would give us a weighted graph. The routes between two airports could be one-way or two-way. When they go one way, we have a directed graph. If they go both ways, it's an undirected graph. For this demo, we'll try to keep things simple. We'll make an undirected graph, assuming that when an airplane has a route, it can fly back and forth between the two airports. It'll be unweighted, so the routes between the two airports won't carry any additional data. And we'll assume cycles are not possible. The first thing we'll need to do is represent our graph in code. Most programming interviews will have you write code in whatever language you prefer. We'll be using JavaScript here, but the most important tip I can give you is to simply explain your thinking process as you're writing your code. Most technical interviewers are trying to get some insight into your thinking process and care less if you write perfectly formatted code. Let's go ahead and walk through a few examples. You might get a question like this. Here's a list of airports and a list of routes connecting these airports. Now represent this data as a graph. So given this data, we can represent the graph in two ways, a matrix or an adjacency list. A matrix takes up more space, but is generally easier to visualize and represent because it's just a two-dimensional array filled with ones and zeros. Now looking at this data, I can see there are not very many routes relative to the number of possible combinations between these airports. That means our matrix would be very sparse, or in other words, filled with a bunch of zeros and take up a lot of unnecessary space, and it would be less efficient to iterate over and search through. Therefore, I choose to represent my graph as an adjacency list. We can implement an adjacency list as a set of key value pairs, where the key is the name of the airport or the node, and the value is an array of edges or the other airports that it's connected to. We could implement this with a regular JavaScript object, but a better option might be a map. When you're doing algorithm problems in JavaScript, a map tends to be a better option than a regular object. It has some additional API methods that can be useful for problems like this, and it just behaves more like a regular dictionary or hash map that you'll find in other languages. So the map is our graph, and at this point it's empty. The first thing we'll do is define a function that can add a node to the map. This function takes the airport code as its argument, and then calls adjacency list set on the airport, and starts it off with an empty array. And that's all it takes to represent a node on the graph. 
To add an edge, we need to update the entries for both the origin airport and the destination. First, we'll grab the entry for the origin airport and then push the destination onto its list. And then we'll do the inverse of that by getting the destination and then pushing the origin onto its list. And that's our entire API for building a graph as an adjacency list. The next step is to use this API with our source data. We can loop over the airports with four each and for each one, call the add node method to add a node to the graph. Once we have our nodes, we can then loop over the routes and add an edge for each route in that array. That function takes two arguments, so I'm going to use the rest syntax here to destructure them. Now you can go ahead and console log this graph by running it in Node.js, and you should get an output that looks similar to this. Congratulations, you just got through the first part of the interview, but that was the easy part. Now the interviewer wants you to implement an algorithm to figure out if there's a route between Phoenix and Bangkok. And as you know from earlier in the video, there are two main ways we can approach this, depth first search or breadth first search. I think the easier one to understand is BFS. You know in order to search a graph, you have to start somewhere. In this case, we'll start with the Phoenix node. So we need a function that takes a starting node as its argument. Write that out on the whiteboard or as pseudocode in whatever editing tool you're using for the interview. From the starting node, you'll want to visit all the children and see if any of them are Bangkok. If not, you'll want to visit their children and do the same thing. And then you'll continue doing this in layers until you find the airport you're looking for. We can represent this process as a queue, which in JavaScript is just an array where the first item in is the first item out. And of course, the first item in your queue should be the starting node. Now, while the queue has items in it, or the length is greater than zero, we'll grab the first item in the array using the array shift method. This method will mutate the original array by removing the first item in it, and then return that item to us here that we set as the airport variable. Our next step is to grab all the edges for this node in the graph. We can do that by calling adjacency list get with that airport name as the key. That'll give us all the destinations for the airport or its children, so we can loop over them and add them to the queue as well. We can also go ahead and log out if any of these airports are Bangkok, the airport we're looking for. Now, one major problem with this code at the moment is that airports have many interconnected routes, and that means our algorithm will be visiting the same nodes over and over again. And in our case, this creates an infinite loop because the queue is never emptied. We can avoid that by keeping track of the airports that we've visited in the past. An easy way to do that in JavaScript is with a set, which is basically an array, but all the values in it are unique. We set it up as an empty set when the function is first called. Then we can use it to set up some conditional logic in our loop. We will only enqueue an item if it does not have this destination. A set has a has method where you can pass a value to see if it exists currently in the set. And then we'll mark the destination as visited by adding it to the set. Then we'll move the line of code that adds this item to the queue inside of our condition here. So an item only gets enqueued if it has not been visited already. Now let's go ahead and call our function using Phoenix as the starting node. What you'll notice is that it goes through nine airports before it finally finds Bangkok. It starts with all the connections to Phoenix, then all the connections to JFK, then from Mexico City, it finds a route to Bangkok. And then it also finds a second route through Lima, Peru. So breadth first search would be really good for finding all the possible routes to determine which one is the most efficient. At this point, your interviewer is super impressed. But then, he or she says, our only concern is if a route from Phoenix to Bangkok exists. We don't care if there are multiple routes, we don't care if it's the best route, we just want to find a route as quickly as possible. How can you traverse this graph more efficiently to meet that need? An approach that would be more efficient for this particular requirement is a depth first search. Instead of going through all the children or destinations for each airport, we'll go to its first child and then to its first child and its first child and so on until we hit Bangkok. And if we don't find it, we'll backtrack to the top of the graph and follow the same pattern. In the last example, we used a queue, but in this example, we're going to use a recursive function, or in other words, a function that calls itself until it reaches some kind of stopping point. This function will take a starting node as its first argument, and then a set as a second argument that keeps track of the different cities that we visited. Because again, we don't want to visit the same node more than once. From there, we'll grab the edges or destinations from our adjacency list. We'll loop over them just like we did before, and when we find what we're looking for, we'll just return from the function. Now here's the interesting part. If a node has not been visited, then we'll go ahead and call the same function, or in other words, call it recursively with the current destination in the loop, as well as our visited set. That means this function call will be pushed to the top of the call stack, making the algorithm go deeper and deeper into the tree until it reaches a stopping point. And that means this function will continue calling itself recursively until all the airports have been visited, or until it finds Bangkok. In this example, it only takes three steps or three function calls to find the route, as opposed to eight in our previous algorithm. But the interviewer has one last question. What is the time complexity of the algorithm that you just implemented, as expressed in big O notation? 
For both breadth-first and depth-first search, big O is expressed as V plus E, which is the total number of nodes or vertices plus the number of edges. Or in other words, the time performance of the algorithm will scale linear based on the number of nodes and edges that are added to the graph. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there, but there are many other algorithms you can use to traverse a graph, so if you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.